Hello everyone, hello Inclusive Africa. It's a great honor to be here joining you from London. My name is Rama, I'm the director of the Helen Hamlin Center for Design at London's Royal College of Art. We exist for one reason and one reason only, and that is inclusive design. On screen, you can see me as a designer, as a design activist, actually practicing the principles of inclusive design, conducting research with people. And that is not a gun that I'm pointing to the lady in the wheelchair, Fiona. That is a video camera. I'm asking her about travel around London when we were looking to redesign the London taxi. Inclusive design is defined by the British government as this, including the needs of the widest number of people in your design. But it simply is design at its most powerful and conscious, its most enabled and enabling, and its most empathic and inclusive. Inclusive design has a 25 year history. It was defined at the Applied Ergonomics Conference in 1994 by our founding director, Roger Coleman, and since then has grown to become a global phenomenon, one of the most important aspects of modern design. We continue to push the boundaries and on right is a free website you can all access called designingwithpeople.org online are tools, methods, and activities of inclusive design for you all to use and share. Don't say I don't give you anything for Christmas. At the Royal College of Art, our graduates have gone, gone on to have global influence. Apple, for instance, employ more of our graduates than any other university. And inclusive design is one of the most important aspects of what we do. It underpins a lot of our work, whether it's fashion, architect, product, service design, or importantly, technology. But there is an issue with design. You know, there's two words in inclusive design, and one of them is design. If you pull out your smartphone and type the word designer into it on any text application, this is what comes up. French painters from the 1940s, is this a representation of the strategic importance or the value that design has to offer? Probably not. Design is a business tool and innovation tool and everything in the world around us has been through a design decision. So it might as well be a good one. It might as well be an inclusive one. Inclusive design is not about post-it notes. It's not about death by paper. It's about people, people in all their diversity, people of all ages, abilities, genders, race, geographies. It is about people. Inclusive design has a global context, but universal impact. The pandemic has brought issues of exclusion into all of our lives. We all thought that aging happened to someone else. We don't have to think about aging for years to come. But the truth is we are all aging as we speak. We all thought that disability was someone else's issue, but we are all on a spectrum of ability. And who would want to wake up with products like this next to our bed or in our homes? We want to use things that are aesthetic that are not stigmatizing, that are not separate, that are not excluding, but are inclusive. Issues of accessibility are now mainstream, and we all have reduced access and ability because of the pandemic. We also have reduced choice and are more reliant on technology. So technology becomes increasingly important. We all believed in a wonderful nonsense pre-2020, you know, about looking good like the peacock on the left of the screen, rather than doing good like the chicken on the right. I just love the fact that she strapped rockets to her back and is delivering healthcare some, somewhere. You know, inclusive design doesn't always look pretty. Sometimes it's functional. And that's what I love about this cartoon. So now we need inclusive design across the world and in every global context. 
Inclusive design is underpinned by frameworks. On screen, you see a four stage diagram with eight inclusive design activities. You can access this at the website, innovatingwithpeople.net, where a book that we wrote on inclusive design is also available. But inclusive design very simply is the creative power to improve life. It's understanding that disability is important, but working with people with a range of disabilities gets it right for everyone else. It's like dis disabled people are pathfinders, lead users, extreme users, you know, can point the way for the rest of, of the world. We're all on a spectrum of ability. And it's important that in technology, we design for people's abilities, not just their disabilities, because everyone has functional needs, but they also have aspirations. A couple of quick examples from us, can color change a person's life? This was some work we did in care homes. On the left, you see white food on a white plate, and it's very difficult for older people to see. Change the color of the plate and people start to eat because they can actually see the food. And in technology, color change can be, mean the difference between access or no access. We also apply inclusive design at systemic level, you know, looking at can you truly co-design a city taxi? The answer is yes. But also in the digital space, this is a medical app that's going through clinical trials at the moment with King's College London. And it's called Slow Down for a Moment, Slow Mo for short. And this looks at people with paranoid thoughts or who are stressed, and it just encourages them to visually slow down paranoid thoughts. It's important to work with real people, as you see on screen. And on right is a colleague of mine, Chris, talking to a little boy in blue who's our youngest ever participant. That was for a project with Samsung. Don't work with fake people. On screen, you see personas and they're all smiling. So if you see too many teeth in the presentation, walk away. As well as functional disability, look at other forms of exclusion, social, economic, geographic, financial, gender and age. And look at how emerging tech can really benefit from inclusive design. And this is where I think Africa can be a global leader in this and that's why we need inclusive Africa. I love this picture because it, ex it expresses the future of inclusive design. It's young, it's black, it's female. And if you want to learn more, we have a week of inclusive design events coming up between the 12th and 16th of October, and you can access that off our website. Thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy the conference and may all your efforts be inclusive.